Well, hi, everybody. It's Miss Michaela and Mr. Dan. Hello. And I thought I'd do a little something different with our video today. I'm going to try to film outside, although it's kind of hot out here. But that's why I like it. I like the, the heat, but sometimes it's hard to like be out here for a long time. But... I wanted to start off by showing you guys what I've been doing with my time. Um, like during the quarantine time, I've had lots of time on my hands, but I started this project last year and my project was gardening. So I don't think I can flip this. How do I flip this? Okay, I flipped it. So I wanted to show you, I have a little tiny backyard and it was really ugly. There were tons of weeds everywhere over here. And now I have a little garden and I'm very proud of it. And I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing and I'm not a professional. So if you know something that I don't know, please tell me, but I have squash. I have a little baby tomato plant. I have more squash. That's a sacrifice, sacrificial plant because all the aphids ate it and that's okay. And then I've got lots of basil. I have little tomatoes growing. So exciting. I love tomatoes. Um, this is cardboard, but they're protecting my cucumber plants so that they're not in the sun all day. And they look quite healthy, healthier than they were. I have kale. And I've got this little patch of dirt over here. And we've got these plants are cosmos plants, and they make these purple flowers. That one's missing some petals, but I've got sunflowers and hopefully those will produce flowers soon. And then these guys are beans. They're, I just planted these not too long ago, so they're kind of tiny still, but little bean plants. And if you guys don't like cilantro, I highly suggest you start liking it because it's the best ever and it goes great on your tacos. That's what I wanted to show you guys that I've been, I'm going to stand in the shade. That's what I've been working on, and it's been so much fun. And I want to know what you guys have been doing at home while we've been stuck at home for so long. Because I, I feel like I film in the same spot all the time, all these little videos. And you guys want to see my eyeballs? There we go. <laughs> but I film in the same spot at home all the time. And I'm like, wow, that must be boring for people to watch all the time. So I was trying to change it up a little bit and have some nice, well, not cardboard, but you know, green background. <laughs> so I figured I'd try to do our little video out here today, show you my garden, and you guys can tell me if you like it. Oh. There's a wasp right next to me. I don't like it. Okay, I think the wasp went away. I think I can, I don't have to wear these, I guess, because it's not so bright since I'm in the shade. <laughs> but this is so fun. This is outside. I mean, you get a view of cardboard. That's not very pretty, but you know, that'll do. <laughs> That's all right. And, and my, my little kale plants. This is my, I'm trying to see it on, there we go, kale plant. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm gonna scoot forward a little bit, and I'm staring at the screen wrong. I put my phone on the on the side, so I have to make sure I look at at not the middle of the phone. I have to look at the camera, not here, there. <laughs> so, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Welcome to my backyard. My house is blue. If you like my blue house. <laughs> so, last week we finished up Moses. I mean, we didn't really finish Moses. We just, we just started Moses, but we're not going to go back to Moses. We're going to start something new today. We're learning about, um, how Jesus is throughout the entire Old Testament, not just in the New Testament and how everything in the Bible is all about Jesus. And today we're going to continue our study and we're going to be in the book of Genesis again. Genesis is just full of lots of cool stories and we're gonna be learning about Abraham and Isaac today so if you guys don't remember who Abraham is he's kind of like a big deal and oh if you don't remember um, when I was teaching about Noah a couple weeks ago I did like a 
or no, not Noah, about Adam and Eve. I did a big family tree on the whiteboard. If I have a picture of it still, I'll put it up on the screen. But Adam and Eve had babies, and then those people had babies, and those people had babies, and those people had babies, and then they had Noah, and then Noah had babies, and Noah had, and then they had babies and babies and babies, and then Abraham was born, and Abraham was, like, he's like such a cool character. He has so many cool stories in the Bible, and God promised Abraham that he would bless the whole nation of Israel through Abraham, and that all of his descendants would like, be, there'd be a ton of Abraham, Abra, Abraham's descendants, or his, the people that came from Abraham, and they would be a blessed nation, and that was one of God's promises to Abraham. And Abraham, well, Abraham had trouble having kids with his wife, Sarah, and they never thought they were gonna have kids together, but then Sarah ended up having a baby at like 99 years old. So they were like really old. And this baby was Isaac. And Isaac was a very special blessing because he wasn't supposed to be born. I mean, most people don't have babies at 99 years old. That's pretty old. <laughs> but the Lord blessed Abraham with Isaac. And God said that he would bless Abraham through Isaac's family as well. So Isaac's whole family and all of his descendants, they were going to be blessed uh, by God's promises and his, and his covenant that he had made with Abraham. And a covenant, if you guys don't remember, is a promise. So God made a lot of promises that he would bless the nation of Israel through Abraham and through Isaac and then through Isaac's son, Jacob. So those are all three common uh, names in the Bible that are often mentioned. And today we're going to focus on a story when Isaac was going to be sacrificed by Abraham, like, like killed. <laughs> and not funny, that's not funny. God was gonna bless Abraham with Isaac and through Isaac bless all the nations of Israel. But in the story, it sounds like he's going to die, which is like, okay, God, are you gonna keep your promise? Are you going to have Abraham kill Isaac or what? Like what's going on? So we're gonna read the story and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually read the whole passage. We're gonna be in Genesis, I think it's 22. Yep, Genesis 22. And I'm gonna read it, summarize it, read it, summarize it, and then at the end, I'll go over some ideas where Jesus is being pointed to through this story or how Abraham and Isaac are similar to Jesus in a lot of ways. So I hope you guys enjoy this new episode about in my backyard. It feels nice to be outside. <laughs> I'm tired of being cooped up inside and I miss you guys a lot. I, I was really sad because this week um, a lot of restaurants had to close again and like the movie theater I think has always been closed but it doesn't seem to be going forward like it was with the coronavirus. So please keep praying that the Lord would, um, would heal people and that more people wouldn't be getting sick so that we could all open up again and and so I could see you guys because it's been it's been months since I've seen some of you guys I've seen a few of you here and there but I really miss you guys and I'm really craving some giant hugs like the ones where you squeeze someone so hard that they're gonna pop I miss those I want those hugs <laughs> so please be praying and with that actually I will pray for us and we will get started on our lesson so everybody bow your heads and close your eyes and let's talk to our Father in Heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, Lord, for this beautiful, sunny, bright day in Napa. And we just thank you for um, the life that you've given us through your Son, Jesus. Um, thank you that you have given us all these stories to look back at, Lord, to show us that uh, Scripture, your Word, your Bible is all about your Son, Jesus, and how he came to save us from our sin and we are sorry for sins that we commit Lord for things where we fall every day um, but we are also very grateful that you forgive us and uh, treat us as if we've never sinned Lord you've washed our sins and we are white as snow now and we are just so thankful for that I want to ask for prayer for Napa that you would heal people who have the virus, Lord, and that you would protect people who haven't had it yet so that we can return back to normal and go back to our normal 
original church, Lord, so we could have children's ministry, we could sing together and learn together. Um, but we do continue to thank you that we are able to meet on YouTube and through other social media and stay connected. We love you so much and we thank you for all that you do and please bless the study. Um, and, I, and I ask that you would uh, just touch everybody who watches this video and that they would learn something new that they hadn't before. We love you, Lord, in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 22. So if you have a Bible, please turn there and follow along with me or you can read the screen, but I really want you guys to be practicing finding, oh, there's a Wallace. That's the one thing about filming outside is you never know what bugs are out to get you and bite you and I don't like being bit by bugs. So hopefully I will survive without getting a bug bite. I've never been bit by a wasp before and I've never been stung by a bee and I'd really like to not find out what that's like. So if you see me hop in and out of my chair, that's why. Okay, Genesis 22. I'm gonna read our story and let's dig in. So chapter 22, verse one. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am, he said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. So we have God telling Abraham that he's going to sacrifice his son on a burnt offering, so he's going to basically tie Isaac up, put him on a bed of wood, maybe stone, and set him on fire. That, does, that seems like kind of strange, like why would God ask him to do that? But back in the day before Jesus came, we've talked about this a little bit, but people used to have to sacrifice um, usually sheep or goats or animals, um, and that was to cover the sins of the Israelites. The blood of, we talked about this last week actually, the blood of the animals would temporarily forgive the sins of the Israelites because Jesus hasn't come yet and Jesus ultimately forgives sins because his blood was shed and he died on the cross. So this is a little different. God is saying that he wants Isaac to be a burnt offering. And it does seem a little harsh because like, well, what did Isaac do? But Abraham isn't questioning God and he just says, okay, I'm gonna go sacrifice my son. You know, God is God and he is in charge and he can do whatever he wants and he is holy and he knows what's best. So Abraham is trusting God that he knows what's going to happen and that it's going to be okay. Next, they are going up to Mount Moriah to go sacrifice Isaac and Abraham goes with a couple of people but at one point Abraham says to the two guys that come with him like to wait and he and Isaac are going to go up to the mountain and give a sacrifice to the Lord and so we're going to pick up in verse 6 I believe and I'll read a little bit more so verse 6 and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they both went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they, both, so, so they went, both of them, together. So at this point, Isaac and Abraham are now on the mountain, they're by themselves, and Isaac knows that they're going to sacrifice something to the Lord, they're going to have a burnt offering, but Isaac's like, uh, dad, where is the lamb that we're going to sacrifice, or the ram, or the animal, where, what are we going to sacrifice? And Abraham just looks at him and says, God will provide something, and Isaac's like, okay, 
no questioning, just all right, God will provide something. God will provide a sacrifice for this offering. And then the next couple of verses, uh, Isaac is, you know, helping his dad build this altar. Um, usually like there's the stone and then there's like wood on top. And then they usually put the animal on top of that and light it on fire. And then Isaac actually is bound by Abraham. So that means that Abraham put like ropes around him to tie him to the altar. And he was planning to kill his son and not to kill him like he wanted to kill him. He was trying to obey God and give him up as a sacrifice. So we'll pick up in verse 10 and I'll read the rest of the story. So verse 10. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. But the, and then he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. All right, well that story, it was a quick, quick read, but basically Abraham and Isaac went up to a mountain to give a burnt offering to the Lord. And this was a sign of honor to the Lord and obedience to the Lord. And Abraham was going to sacrifice his own son because God told him to. And then Isaac's like, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide one. And he starts binding up Isaac to put him on the altar to kill him with a knife. And then the angel of the Lord, God says from heaven, stop, don't kill your son. You have shown that you love me and that you are obedient and you respect me. And then Abraham looks over and there is a ram caught in some bushes. And that was used for the, for the sacrifice instead of Isaac. So it's kind of a weird story. Like why would God tell Abraham to go kill his son? First of all, that's weird. Like that's a weird thing in the first place. And then the second thing is that why would then God say to not do it and then change his mind in a sense? Like, what's going on, Lord? What are you doing? What are you trying to teach us? We have a few ideas to go through. I'm going to try to go through them ASAP because I could spend a lot of time talking on this. So I'm going to try to do my best to make a nice, tight, pretty summary tied in a bow for you as a present. <laughs> So we'll start with my first point is actually going back to the beginning of the story in verses two and three. So Abraham is called by God to sacrifice his own son as a burnt offering for God. And if, if God asked most people I know to do the same thing to their kid, they'd probably be, be like, no. Like, I'm not going to go kill my own son or my own daughter. Like, that's not okay. That's just like, who would want to do that as a parent? And honestly, the kids, they probably wouldn't like it either. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in that position if I was a kid. But Abraham is asked by God. And literally, it doesn't even say that Abraham was resistant. He didn't, um, he didn't fight God or question God or like, he's like, why, why are you asking me to kill my son? He didn't ask that. All he did was respond obediently. He immediately started packing his things and getting ready to go sacrifice his son. And that is mind blowing because I don't know any parent, mom or dad, who would want to do that to their kid. And I'm not saying that Abraham wanted to kill his son Isaac, but he did it because God asked him to. And this is very similar to Jesus. And we actually talked about this, I think it was last week, how Jesus is obedient and he's perfectly obedient to God the Father. And I wanted to read to you guys a verse in 
Philippians. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. So chapter 2, verse 8. I don't want to get stung by a bee. <laughs> it's happening. They freak me out, guys. Like, I love bees and wasps. I think they're beautiful, but I don't want to be touched by one. It's not my thing. Anyways, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. So this is in the New Testament. So we're going to talk about Jesus now and how it's like how, how he's like Abraham like, in this story. So it says, and this is talking about Jesus. And being found in human form, so Jesus was in human form, God in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So Jesus, he came to this earth to die for us. And this was the command of God the Father. He gave up his son Jesus to die for us. And Jesus was obedient even if it meant he had to die. And it's very similar to the story we just read about Abraham. Uh, actually, it's, I'll get to this point next about Isaac being obedient too. But Abraham is obeying God and he is willing to give up his own son to serve God. And God gave up his son, Jesus, and that was to save us from our sin so that we could go to heaven one day. And Jesus was perfectly obedient. And even though it probably was really scary, even, even though he's God, it's probably not fun to go down a cross. He was willing to do that for us. And he was obedient, even though he knew he was going to die. So Jesus is a lot like, Ab or Abraham's a lot like Jesus in this, where Jesus is obedient and he's obedient to the father to go kill his son for the father and Jesus is obedient to the to God the father by giving up his own life to save us the so next point I just mentioned it earlier Isaac is also obedient just like Abraham was but he's obedient in a different way just like Jesus is so Isaac he asked his dad where is this animal that we're going to sacrifice to God and all that Abraham says is that God will provide a sacrifice and to, to basically not worry. So Isaac, it's okay. God will provide a sacrifice. And the next thing you know, Abraham is tying up his own son and putting him on the altar, getting a knife ready to kill him. And it doesn't say this in the Bible, what Isaac's response is, but Isaac, it doesn't sound like he's resisting at all. He's just getting he's on the altar he's not crying out help me or like why are you doing this or what's going on like any kid would if you're if your dad was told to kill you for God and then you were put on an altar to be killed wouldn't you ask your dad or your mom what are you doing <laughs> what's going on but Isaac he didn't question anything he was he was bound up put on the altar and he's not complaining and he's just going along with the plan. In this story, it says that he was a young boy. So some people think he's a teenager, some people think he's a little bit older than a teenager, but either way, he's still being obedient. And just to say, when Isaac was born, Abraham was like in his 100s, like he was an old man. So Isaac, if he's young, a young guy, he probably could have taken out his father, like beat him up and been like, nope, you're not killing me today. <laughs> but instead, he submits to God or, and he submits to Abraham and is going to, be the going to go on the altar to be the burnt offering. And what submitting means is just he's basically being obedient to what uh, to what Abraham was doing and in the verse that I just read about Jesus that was the same thing where Jesus is submitting he's obeying God and he's going to the cross and Isaac is going to the altar and it's a it's a really it's really cool how like Abraham can be like Jesus in that sense and how Isaac can be like Jesus too in the same way. They're both obedient, but both doing different things. So this third point I have, we've kind of gone over it a little bit already, but it's a, it's just a small little thing to think about. And maybe you've already thought about it yourself, but so there's Abraham and Isaac, and there's 
God the Father and God the Son. So the Father and Jesus. And there's a lot of similarities between these two stories. So Abraham is very similar to Jesus in some ways because he's very obedient and he's following God's uh, orders. But Abraham is also kind of like God the Father in a way because he is sacrificing his son, Isaac, to honor God, his only son. Isaac's old, Isaac was the son of Abraham and Isaac was a very treasured, precious son to Abraham because he wasn't supposed to have kids with Sarah. They weren't, they weren't supposed to like, cause Sarah had a lot of problems trying to have a baby. But then Isaac was born and he was the treasured possession of Abraham and now he's killing him because God told him to. And God, he doesn't want his own son Jesus to die either, but he's willing to give up his son to give us eternal life. And that is so cool. So Abraham is kind of like God the Father in that way and also like Jesus. And then Isaac is also like Jesus because he is uh, being led to the altar or the cross, just like Jesus was being led to the cross. And they both were obedient and submissive. They, uh, they didn't question what was happening. They just knew that God, the Father, had commanded these things to happen for Isaac to die and for Jesus to die. And so they both went with it. So there's just those similarities between God the Father and God the Son to Abraham and Isaac. And just a quick review on the altar thing, guys. I know I've already talked about this a lot, but it's always good to review. But we used to have altar altars um, to sacrifice to God um, before Jesus came. And we had to sacrifice um, with animals and their blood had to be spilled or they had to be killed. And so now we don't have to do that anymore because Jesus died on the cross and his blood was spilt or it, it was it was shed on the cross and that covered our sins. And uh, the, the verse that I wanted to read to you guys about that is actually in the book of Romans, which is another hard book to read. There's so many hard books in the Bible to read, but they're all so, so good. So this is a very well-known verse in the church world Romans 6 23 it says for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord so that first part says the wages of sin is death so what does that mean so we sin we disobey God and the punishment for that is that we die and that doesn't just mean that we die like our bodies die and we're in a grave and we're a ghost. Ooh. No, that actually is talking about um, our spirit. We all have spirit inside of us, guys. And that's keeping us alive. The breath of God is keeping us alive. But when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and they ate the, the fruit from the bad tree, they actually were cursed from that day. They were separated from God because they used... Ooh, gosh. Oh, I can't wait to look at that back on camera. <laughs> Guys, it's just not worth it to film outside right now. There are wasps and they are they are trying to eat me. I'm just convinced they're trying to eat me. I wanna be inside where it's safe and where there are only um, some cockroaches. We do have cockroaches and it's, they don't like, well, I don't mind them so much. They're kind of gross, but they're like, they're bugs. Mr. Dan does not like cockroaches. If you ever wanna play a joke on him, get one of those little cockroach like like rubber bug things and like put it on his hat or something <laughs> just as a joke but don't tell him I said that <laughs> anyways where was I? I I I like flipped out over there I guys I my bible's all crinkled because I freaked out about the the hornet or the the wasp whatever it was but anyways I'm not sure where I left off but I'll start with Romans 6 23 so we were talking about the wages of sin, right? Is death. We disobeyed God. And that started back when Adam and Eve were alive. The first sin committed was that they disobeyed God by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And their punishment for disobeying God was that they were going to be separated from God forever. And that meant that they couldn't 
like literally spend time with God the Father in person. And obviously they didn't die on the spot right there, like they just dropped dead. So we all have to die one day, right? I, I'm going to be in a grave one day, or my bones are, and, and you know, my body. But there's also a spirit inside all of us. And the spirit either goes with God in heaven forever or in hell forever, separated from God. But the only way that we can be with God again is through Jesus. But because we sin, because we're sinners and we can't always obey God like we want to, we are cursed and we are separated from God eternally. And God said that that is the punishment. There has to be blood spilt for punishment to be justified for justice and God made a way so that we didn't have to die and spend our whole rest of eternity separated from him and that was through Jesus instead of our blood being spilt on the cross where we should die Jesus died for us instead and that is literally what it means the wages of sin is death the punishment for disobeying God is death. But because we have a free gift from Jesus, if we believe in him and we follow him and we, we serve God for our life, then we can escape the second death of going to hell. I'm thrilled to know that. Like That's a wonderful thing because I don't want to go anywhere that God isn't. Because if God's not there, probably a bad place. I want to be with God, with my creator, with the, the God who, who created me and gave me life and gave me the opportunity to experience life, even if it means being bit by a wasp. I'm thankful for that anyways. <laughs> but it's just, it's such an important thing to know, guys, that that when we sin, when we disobey God, we deserve really bad things to happen to us. But Jesus, God is so gracious to us and he loves us so much that he gave us his son he sacrificed his son and that's why this this story is so cool because it kind of is a reflection of what is to come or what what did come when jesus came and died for us abraham gave up his only son isaac his only son as a sacrifice to god and obviously he didn't die because we'll finish the rest of the story but it, it, he didn't have to die for us. So that's going to be our next point. When I read the story earlier, we read that uh, God provided a little ram, or that's kind of like a, a lamb with, with little horns on it. And God provided one for Abraham and Isaac to sacrifice instead of Isaac being sacrificed. This is very important, and I'll tell you why. So Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, all right? I know that this is, these are my fingers. I don't have anything better than that, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I had cool ability to do like cool graphics on the screens, like the animation and stuff, but alas, I cannot. I have fingers. So Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was going to kill Isaac by putting him on an altar to sacrifice to God. God says, you have shown obedience. Oh, this isn't working with the fingers. Okay. I'll just talk about it. So God said to Abraham, you have shown that you are so obedient that you would be willing to sacrifice your son for me. Do not kill your son. Here is a ram or a substitute or you know how you guys have a substitute teacher sometimes for class or maybe, well, a lot of you guys are homeschooled. So maybe if your mom is sick, then your dad is the substitute teacher. I don't know. <laughs> but someone who comes in and does the job for you, right? That's what a substitute means. So the ram that was provided by God does the job that Isaac was originally supposed to do. Isaac was supposed to die, but the ram died instead. He was a substitute for Isaac. And this is so important, guys. We were supposed to die, right? Like that's what I just said. We disobeyed God we were supposed to die, our blood was supposed to be shed, and Jesus was our substitute. God sent him to go in our place, just like the ram. 
what? So cool. Like that is the coolest thing ever. I'll say that one more time. So Abraham was supposed to kill Isaac for, or not kill him, like murder him. I should stop saying that. Abraham was supposed to sacrifice Isaac, his son, for God. God said, you have been obedient. I will give you a substitute. I will give you someone else or something else to do your job. And that is this ram. We have sinned, but we are trying to be obedient because we're Christians and we want to do what's right and we want to follow Jesus. And even though we don't do it perfectly, we always try to be like Jesus and try to follow his example and be obedient to God. And God is having grace on us. He had grace on Isaac. He had grace on Isaac, gave him a ram. Now he's having grace on us and he gave us Jesus to die in our place. So, so cool, guys. Like, I just can't get enough of that. I think I'm much happier being inside away from the from the wasp. I think I'm smiling more in here. <laughs> I just, ooh, wasps. No, there was this guy on YouTube that I was watching. And he purposely finds bugs that sting or bite and, like, has them sting or bite him. So he can, like, show people, like, oh, this is what happens. Don't do that, guys. That's not that's not smart. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> it's not fun, but it is entertaining to watch. Just saying I have 12% battery left on my phone. So I got to film this real fast before it dies. <laughs> so I'll go over those points real quick. Again, Abraham and Isaac, two points were both obedient. Isaac was obedient when he did not resist his dad trying to give him up as a sacrifice. And Abraham was obedient because he obeyed God's command to sacrifice his only son. Jesus is the ultimate awesome example of being obedient because he obeyed God the Father to go die on the cross for us. Second, well, that was one point and two points. So third point, which is kind of tied into those first two, Abraham is a lot like God the Father because he's giving up his son and God gave up his son, their only son to sacrifice for someone else. And God, the father is, or, and Isaac is like Jesus in a lot of ways because Isaac willingly allowed and gave his father, gave himself over to his father to be killed as a sacrifice on the altar. And Jesus did the same thing. He gave himself as a sacrifice on the cross for us. Very similar. And the fourth point is that Isaac was given a substitute for himself, a ram. Isaac was supposed to die. God gave a ram instead to die in Isaac's place. Gave him grace. God gave us grace instead of having to be separated from us for eternity he gave up his son Jesus as a substitute for us instead on the cross. And now we get to be with him forever if we believe in Jesus. Very important. If someone does not believe in Jesus and they do not decide to follow God for their life, then they're still separated from God. So that's why we have to tell people about Jesus, guys. Because if someone doesn't know Jesus and they don't know what he did for us on the cross then they might not go to heaven. They might be separated from God forever. And we don't want that. We want to be with God forever and we want to experience how awesome he is and this awesome place called heaven that he's created for us to be in that's perfect and hopefully has lots of peanut butter cups. And I mean, it might not, but that's what my mom always says. She always hopes that Reese's peanut butter cups are in heaven. I hope the ice cream's in heaven, but I have a feeling that something better than ice cream is in heaven. Something like, hmm, worshiping God for the rest of our lives. <laughs> but ice cream would be cool too, but we'll see what's gonna, what's gonna be in heaven as far as food goes. Now time for a memory verse, which I totally forgot to tell you guys on camera last week. I was just in another world today and I feel more focused today, which is good. So the memory verse is actually not a verse that we have talked about so far in this video, but it has a lot to do with what we talked about in this video. And fun fact, when I got married to Mr. Dan, so if you guys didn't know me and Mr. Dan are married, I got my little wedding ring right here. 
We sent out wedding invitations to people that we invited. Had I known all of you guys back then, I would have invited you, so please don't feel bad, but you guys are invited in my heart. But we had little wedding invitations that we sent out and we put a little Bible verse on the bottom of it. And this verse is your memory verse. It's Acts 4.12. So I'm gonna read that for you guys, but I first have to find it. I found it. Acts chapter four, verse 12. And if you don't know where Acts is, it's in the beginning of the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the fifth book of the Bible in the New Testament. I don't know what book of the Bible it is after the Old Testament, but it's in the New Testament. So Acts chapter four, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Quick context, if you read a couple of verses before and a couple of verses after that verse, you'll know that this is talking about Jesus. There is salvation in nobody but Jesus. Only Jesus can save us from death. There is no other name under heaven. So heaven is above us, right? There's nobody on earth who can save us but Jesus. And that's it. Isaac can't die for us. Nobody else can die for us. Only Jesus could have died for us because he was perfect and flawless and did everything awesomely. So please memorize that verse. And I have to admit, I have forgotten this verse. Like I memorized it when we put it on our wedding invitation, but I have forgotten it. So I will work on memorizing it myself. But just remember that Jesus is the only one that can save us. Nobody else can do that. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I... Let's see, what's new this week? Well, my car is getting fixed. I know none of you guys drive, but one day you will drive. And it's really, it's not convenient when you have to go somewhere and you don't have a car. I could walk places, but then I'd have to walk pretty far because Napa's kind of big. So it's hard, it's hard stuff, but that's new. And then I showed you guys my garden I'm still working. If you guys ever want to go out to eat this week and support your local businesses, come to R&D Kitchen. That's where I work. <laughs> so you guys can buy some food from me. I make pizzas and I make bread and you guys can come wave to me at the window if you want. I know some of you guys know where I work. I've seen a few of you already, but please come say hi to me. And we're going to have church this week. We're not allowed to sing, which is really sad, but we can worship in other ways, which is very cool. And I hope to see some of you guys. I know I won't see all of you, but I miss you guys a lot. And I hope to see you guys soon. And I feel like I'm smiling so much. I just smiling is my favorite. I love it so much. <laughs> so I love you guys. I will see you soon. Until next week. <laughs>